Hey guys, quick video. Um, again, I'm uh, just making some parts this time. So I've made the uh, manufactured up a little bracket for my headphones, which will go on the center console, just behind the pilot's right elbow. And also um, quite a bit of work, not much to show for it, but quite a bit of work for a fuel shutoff valve. Enjoy this one. Okay, forward fuselage. Got the skin up. Um, just skin up and footy on. So I'm just putting in some cross braces here. I was contemplating hinging this and swinging it down, but the amount of loom, I worked out the amount of loom that you'd need just sort of pigtailed up here to enable that to drop right down. Um, I don't think it's worth it. Time will tell. Uh, what I did do is work out I've got a 10 inch hole one side and a 9 inch hole the other. So if I remove the EFIS or the iPad, then I'm going to end up with a hole that big in the dash. So I had a bit of a look and a play with trusty old cardboard. Um, you know, I think I can reach in there and do what I do. Yeah, it's going to be awkward, but working on aeroplanes is never perfect. So that's going to be two big holes where I can reach around, do whatever I have to do in, in through the dash. That's what I've gone with. And sticking with my KISS principle, keep it simple, stupid. So with my cross members here, I just had to, um, the firewalls, uh, those just sitting on the cross member here, on the round tube, the firewalls slanted back. So they're not square, so what I did was just bent the ends, notched, cut out, bent the end just because I needed it to sit nice and when they're installed they all need to sit nice and flat if I put a, a rivet through there and then now I put some trays in here going well. Okay, a bit of freelancing going on here. I'm just going to make um, a headset jack receptacle if you like. So, no real science, I'm just eyeballing this. A bit of plywood. I've made that the width of the ruler, so it's getting the square out. 100mm. Um, haven't got my headset. Haven't got my headset jacks yet, so I'm just using the Dremel, Dremel drums. Headset jacks will be something like that, um, pilot and co-pilot. Now I'm going to, got some old 12mm balsa here, 12.7. I'll make up a little, little shape if you like, like a ski jump, um, and this will become my mould. For my radiuses, I always like to use, I just use a pedal pop stick and just uh, get it on there. Gives me a consistent radius for my corners. All right, there's the first blank, bit of an angle. You draw two lines on it because uh, I made a mistake. That's all right. I taper this down, so it'll be a tapered box. Yeah, see so how we go. Okay, there's a couple minutes work. There's my mold. I'm just going to run a, um, a mix up some uh, filler. Just run a finger fill it all around the edge just so it'll release nice and we'll see how that works out. And there's uh, there's a mould ready to go. Just did that literally a finger fill it around there. Um, lick your finger or OHS, dip your finger in, put a glove on, dip your finger in something and whip it around there. Just gives it a nice fillet. Not sure if it's going to work, but um, yeah, I'm just going to use sellotape a la Mark Patey for um, my release agent. And I've just got some, just got some four ounce cloth. That's what I had in the cupboard, so that's what I'll use. Um, it'll probably get the um, probably get the carbon sticker uh, treatment just to match. The center, top of the center console. It'd be nice if I had some carbon, but I'm not going to go out and buy some just for that little piece. Um, 
I am copying what I saw on Aircraft Spruce. I know you can buy this thing, but I thought I'd give it a go and just make one. And uh, that's three layers of four ounce glass. That's what I had. We'll see how that turns out with that cure. Alright, just trimming up the edges. Now let's see if we can pop this out. Still a bit green. But I'll get it out and then it can dry properly in the sun. Alright, so I had a bit of trouble getting that off, but popped off now, popped off quite nicely um, and there's my little moulded part I'll trim up the flange, I may need to um, just work on this fillet and I might stiffen up inside a bit of plywood in there for the um, headphone jacks to actually have something solid to go on but that's um, worked out well little mould, fiberglass part, done next little job, I've just been um, just been practicing my swaging. Seems to have come out pretty well. Now I've got three, three crimps into each swage with a bit of heat shrink. Tricky is to remember to put the heat shrink on first, especially with the second one. Uh, this is just from the hardware store. These shackles and the cable. The cable doesn't quite. I get a bit of sideways movement in the thimble, but just to practice on, they're fine. A um, little bit of difficulty getting the eye ends square without a without a twist in there but it's worth um, definitely worth doing the practice all right a bit of pre-planning for my fuel system I've got this uh, the Zenith supplied fuel shut off which I might as well use fairly sturdy, sturdy unit not the most attractive thing but when I I mounted in a bit of aluminium I'll show you so a little mock up here when it's mounted you just see the tap now with that I was going to mount that on the side console down the bottom here somewhere but it just um, just pokes out that annoying amount that I'm going to kick it at some stage, even where when I'm wearing my thongs, um, but I'm going to kick it or stand on the tap and turn it off. Probably more importantly, so I'm going to recess it in, build a little box, and recess it in. We'll see how that goes. So out with the cardboard again. If I get a box approximately that size with the tap mounted in there, then I can reach in and turn the tap off in an emergency or for maintenance and then turn it back on and I'll put a bit of a telltale like an anti-tamper lock wire but we can finesse that later so I'm guessing I might just use thin alloy trust the old L angles if I put um, I'm going to do it 1L, 1L that way and then another one on top will give me a nice flange to all four sides. We'll see how that works out. All right, sometimes it takes longer to design these things and actually make them. Um, looks a bit rough at the moment, but got the valve in the box. That'll all be recessed. We go in the console. Uh, looks a bit rough. I did, I probably could have the rivet sequence I guess get these with the heads on the inside but the uh, rivet gun wouldn't fit in there but still all works I think I'll put a um, might use an Adele clamp on the back to secure it just depends on the head of the bolt the head of the bolt may get in the way um, but that'll sit in there with fuel off and fuel on um, I'll have to put a little I'll put a little stop bolt or something there 
um, and then when the skin goes on so like the side console will go over the top of this and then I'll just cut a nice a nicer um, just a recess just a big enough for the handle just a you know a mounting flange you get the idea that'll uh, ne neaten that up so going well okay so the concept worked well it's a little bit agricultural and I think the back plate's a bit too thin so let's do it again all right taking a bit more time this time just working and get the handle um, mounted first so the two Adele clamps on the back orientated right so they're hanging down aviation bolts through the Adele clamps so that's all nice and solid I'll trim the plate up later the tap check that the holes open and then the tap will just go to closed and a little um, four mil bolt with a lock nut just becomes my stop can't really underestimate the importance of um, yeah that obviously has to stay open all right so just on my fuel shut off that's the that's my first go wasn't too happy with that so pulled the pin and decided to do it again the problem with this one the back was a bit too thin I used what I had um, what else could have been a little bit squarer and also the the rivet tails are on the inside so I'm a friendly neighbor I went down and raided his he's, he's a metal worker so I went down and raided his bin um, got some thicker material thicker L angles uh, did the rivets the right way around so I've got it's not actually bolted up at the moment Adele clamps on the back it's for the 38 hose will go on um, I'll lube up the connections and I've got a four mil bolt in there just to I just have to finalize um, obviously I want the the fuel to flow through the valve 100% um, just needs a bit of a fine tune the tap just snicks the nut so I'll just take a little bit off the tap um, now that will bolt into the fuselage and I won't kick it so the plan now that'll get mounted in the side console which is nicely painted so I'll do my best to try and salvage that if I have to probably bite the bullet and then um, scuff it back and give it another coat I've got a paint inside this as well so that's why it's only loose I'll pull it apart and give that a coat of paint just because well I want to um, and that'll sit somewhere there so when it's in the aircraft the string represents my rudder cables um, in the panel there nice and neat so a couple of days work for me or a couple of sessions um, but now at least I'm not going to kick the fuel tap off which would be a story in itself all right side console panel got my new snazzy bracket on the back decision time uh, the easy option is just to rivet that on once I cut the hole obviously for the for the tap but I've gone to the trouble of making this panel removable so I think I'll put anchor nuts where those six holes are so I don't I won't interrupt the fuel line so that that bracket will stay behind with the fuel line and then I can still what's an extra six bolts 1032 screws and pull this panel off to get to my uh, electrical flight controls cables whatever else so once again skip the easy option the easy option is rivets just rivet that on but then it means when the panel comes off you know I can only move it sort of half an inch because the fuel hose will be connected so I'll put anchor nuts there that's what we're doing and the, in the initial cut I'm trying to save the surface just to save getting me this getting the spray gun out one more time um, I might just I might just brush in there although don't drop your standards I'll probably spray it and find something else to spray just a bit of grey inside here For the initial cut and now get the hand tools out alright so good couple of hours work there 
mucking around getting that um, sorted out, but um, I think it was worth the effort because I've ended up with the result that I wanted. So I've got a good functional fuel shutoff valve. Um, give you a look at that. So obviously just temp installed at the moment. I um, cut the hole out and yeah, there's a couple of little marks where I sat the panel on some swarf. So I may, I might just paint this skin again. Just depends. Yeah, it's going to get a bit. You slip with a screwdriver or something and wreck the juco. But with the fuel tap, got that positioned in there nicely. Come up pretty good. So if that, that's where it will remain. It's down against the stop, and then to um, shut it off for maintenance or in an emergency. Um, relatively easy to get that up there. Got a bit of stiffness to it, so it's a proper effort to actually close it. On the inside of the console, once again the strings rep representative of my rudder cables. You can see how that's sitting and my fuel tube, which I'm sort of planning the run at the moment. That'll go through the through the zenith hole um, with an Adele clamp back here just to get out of the way of the, of the flight controls. So really happy with how that's turned out. It's going well. With the fuel line routing, I did consider potentially coming under the seat. Initially I was going to, I toyed with the idea of putting fuel filter and fuel pump under the seat. So you just take the seat out to, to service those two. And you could actually, there is room to bring the fuel hose underneath the top torque tube and in between the elevator push rod and the top, top torque tube. Um, you could come square across and if you came come in square you go between the two and then you could um, basically route it route it like that which um, was a consideration but I think I'm going to go just straight down the middle my header tank will be over here um, underneath the del clamp on the floor run under the floor up to the header tank so that's where that's my thoughts on the um, fuel tube at the moment so with the Javaru engine uh, it's just the one one fuel line up to the front so now with the fuel line I'm thinking um, got my fuel so header tank fuel shut off go up to the firewall um, the electric pump might be in the cockpit or on the firewall side and um, a decent gas collator uh, or fuel filter so that's where we're at at the moment here's the um, Zenith supplied gas collator um, you'd have to lock oh, it's got a lock wire hole there so you'd have to lock this bar undoes and the bowl slides off uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to use this or upgrade but that's what's supplied from Zenith with that fuel valve, yeah, really happy with that. That's just turned out really good. How professional does that look? Nice and flush. Can't knock it. Easily accessible. So, going well. Alright guys, freezing cold day here in Melbourne. Um, it is, uh, it's hosing down outside. Um, might go inside and see what we've got as far as footage goes and knock out another video. So, I hope you're enjoying it. Thanks for watching and see you next time.